So today we're going to be going over doing brakes on a typical drum set drum setup. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can go about doing this, but I wanted to show one way of doing it, utilizing only tools that are traditionally found in your toolbox. Those being a set of needle nose pliers, a small sledgehammer, and a pry bar. So some things to note before we get started, uh, making sure we keep track of our lug nuts. So you'll see that I've placed all the lug nuts on the table. Normatively, if, if we're in the shop, I'm gonna put all these inside of a box and place them close to the tires or right uh, on the right or over the wheel end that I'm working on. I wanna make sure that I keep all my lug nuts with their associated wheel end. This is because we still have some directional lug nuts out there where you have left-handed and right-handed threaded lug nuts, uh, depending on the application that you're working on. So you wanna make sure that you don't run a risk of cross-threading them when you're trying to put them back together. In order just to alleviate any stress behind that, a uh, good rule of thumb is making sure you put things back on where you got them off from. Uh, another thing to note is that we've went on ahead and removed the mud flap because understanding that depending on where I'm trying to get my body position, that mud, a mud flap can get in the way. Uh, a really good habit that mechanics, uh, as we progress through our mechanic career, we need to get into is making sure that we keep our areas clean and kind of free of any clutter or anything that's gonna get in our way. Granted that, you know, in a, this is a school setting, so in a real shop, you know, we have productivity times and stuff like that. However, you know, as we become more proficient at completing our tasks and our, pro our productivity times are gonna tend to go up and um, we should be more aware of, you know, uh, how to do the job more comfortably and what kind of steps we can take to uh, alleviate anything getting in our way. And definitely a mud flap can be something that if you're having a difficult time with a wheel in and a brake setup, uh, the mud flap is just gonna make you more and more irritated as it continues to push you in the head and slap you in the back and so on and so on. All right, so let's get to the brakes. So, so what I'm gonna be trying to do here is I'm gonna use this, this pry bar to knock out these springs, these two springs right here. Um, I'm going to use the end of the pry bar that is um, bent outwards, and I'm going to keep that facing outwards. So when I do this side, it's going to be facing this way. When I do this side, it's going to be facing that way. The reason that I'm doing that is because I'm trying to provide a point of leverage. And I'm trying to get it, get that part right here on the spring. And what that's going to allow is it's going to help me pop that spring out. So I'm gonna to try to wedge it as much as I can with my hand and I'm gonna strike it with the hammer. As you see, that one came out pretty easily. And that side went out, came out as well. Once I get those two springs out, the only thing I need to do is kind of, I can either kick, I can kick that down and I can or I can pull this out and then now I have it all taken apart So the next part, I want to go ahead and remove my anchor pins. So the thing with your anchor pins is you have this bushing, so you can get a better shot of this. You have this bushing right here. Depending on where you work at is gonna be kind of how you address this bushing. Um, in the rebuild kits, you get a new bushing to put in here. But a lot of shops, they won't want you to necessarily mess with this bushing unless you unless it has a burr in it or you're running to a situation where the anchor pins are frozen. But if they slide in and out, 
like this a lot of times shops will you know depending on where you work at they'll say just leave it in there and just replace the anchor pin don't worry about the bushing so i'm gonna leave that to your discretion and leave that to your shops and however they tell you to do it um we will make a video later on on how to replace those anchor pin bushings but for right now we're going to take both our anchor pins out So here we have a can you come on here, So here we have a replacement hardware kit. So normally you would have new shoes, probably new drums, and you would have your hardware kits. Hardware kits are to be utilized every single time you do a brake job. You should never be putting old hardware on a brake job. And that even is if you have to take this assembly apart to do something else, like do some other sort of maintenance. Um, you should still be making sure that anytime that these shoes come off for whatever reason, um, that you're at least replacing the hardware. You don't have to necessarily replace the shoes, but you should replace all the hardware associated with the shoes anytime the shoes come apart. Because as you've seen, when we're pulling on those to take them apart, we're putting a lot of stress and strain on those springs and basically we're stretching them out of place so they can't be utilized in the same fashion that they were. They don't, we're, we're basically distorting the strength of those. Uh, or destroying the strength of the springs when we're doing that. But for this demonstration purposes, we're just gonna put this back together because we're gonna do this multiple times in the, in the class. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna hook this large spring in. And what I'm trying to do, if you can see here is I'm trying to, the hardest part of this is gonna get be to get this spring around the S-cam. I, I need the spring to basically be on this side of the S-cam. You can't have it on this side of the S-cam where it's gonna, uh, the S-cam is gonna rub up against it. And granted, this is one of those things, as the more time you, the more times you do this job, you'll gain more proficiency at it. So naturally you'll get faster, faster at doing it. So as you can see, that went together. And now you see the spring is on the other side of the s cam. So let's come back on this side, Lee. So what I wanna do now, and I'm gonna do this very purposely, right? So I wanna take my smaller spring and I wanna, I wanna do the inside first, the side closest to the chassis. This is because we're gonna start putting the anchor, spring, anchor pins in next. And it's much easier for you to get leverage to pull the, to put tension on the other spring like this on when you're on this side. So your body is positioned on this side. So this one, I just want to hook and I don't even need a tool to do it. So I know you're saying, well, obviously Lester, those are bent springs, but even if they were brand new springs, I still would need a tool to do that because I can just, because there's no tension right now. So now I'm going to install my anchor pins. So again, I want to be very aware of what I'm doing with my with my pry bar. I'm going to utilize the pry bar in such a way where the curved end of the pry bar is kind of catching the wheel end. So as you see, so since I'm on the bottom, I'm going to go make sure the curved end is facing downward and I'm going to press down and I'm making sure the entire time I'm doing this, I'm keeping my fingers clear of any pinch points. So I'm pressing down and see how easy that slid in. So now I'm gonna flip, I'm gonna flip the bar over. See, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a good ways in there, right? I'm being aware 
that I have my wheel speed sensor. So I'm not prying up against my wheel speed sensor. I'm not prying up against the harness of the wheel speed sensor. So I know that I'm not damaging it, but I'm getting a good amount of leverage so I can push up on this. And I'm gonna slide this, slide this pin in, all right? So now I have both my pins in. Take my other spring. I'm gonna clip it on the top. And so when I grab it with my needle nose pliers, again, I wanna be very aware of what I'm doing. You see how I'm making sure the needle nose pliers is inside of the cradle of the spring. And then when I try to do this, right? Because again, it's gonna take me quite a bit of force. I'm a heavier guy, I'm six foot four, I weigh over 300 pounds, I'm fat. So this is a little bit easier for me. But for, you know, if you're a smaller person, um, you need to be very, really aware of what you're doing. So what I do is I make sure I get a good grip on it. And then I'm gonna take my other hand and kind of cradle my hand against the needle nose pliers and my other hand to kind of force that in there, right? And guide it right into the hole. So if you see it and then they catch just the tip, you can take it and pop it the rest of the way in. And it'll go right in for you. All right. So now we're gonna move to the, the roll pins, making sure that, and we see that this clip is a little distorted but normally, you know, we would have new hardware, new clips. So the goal is to get these ends of the clips into these holes right here. So it's a hole you see on the top shoe, the hole on the bottom shoe. So we want to get the clips, the, the nubs on the clips into those holes. So these nubs are going to go into those holes and that's going to secure the roll pin in place. So again, what we can do is let's start off with the bottom one. We're going to sit it in there, pinch it, and now it's inside of the hole. top one what you can do with the top one and this one probably isn't gonna work right but what we can do with the top one is instead of trying to push it in what you want to do is you set it in behind the hole right so you set the nubs in behind the hole and then you're gonna grab it with your needle nose pliers and pull it forward and you'll hear it kind of metallically, metallically click in the place So again, being really aware, because right, right, look what I can do right now. So if I'm not paying attention, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna inadvertently put my pry bar here and pry up against this wheel speed sensor. I don't wanna do that, right? I don't wanna put anything, I don't wanna potentially break that wheel speed sensor. I wanna be very aware of what I'm doing. So I'm gonna sit this in here, kind of like that, right? And now I'll let the shoe down on top of it. I'm gonna grab my needle nose pliers, stick them in right through here. And pull it forward. And I heard it lock into place. And that's gonna be it. And so after that, you know, you can put your drum back on so you can come on out. Lee. So after that, you can put your you can put your drum back on, um, put your wheels back on. Well, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't have you do that. I would, if I'm doing all the actual, I would just immediately move over to my other side and start doing the exact same procedure on the other side. Until you are 100% comfortable with a shoe change procedure, one thing you should make sure of is that you never take all the wheel ends apart at the same time. That's because if you do that, you won't have a frame of reference 
of how it goes back together. Granted, if it's just like this, then you can always look at this video and figure out how to put it back together, yes. But there are other types of shoe setups that you'll find out there in the workplace and just changing shoes in general. So whether it's on the air brake system or on a vehicle, uh, they have unique spring setups and you want to always provide yourself with a reference of how that spring setup came apart. And even a picture won't suffice because oftentimes what you find is that a picture will miss some of the most nuanced parts that are tend to be some of the most important aspects of the uh, sh job that you need to remember. So what I tell people when they're starting off and you've not done this, you know, at least 10 or 15 times, leave the other side apart right now, right? Make sure you get your speed up on your wheel in. When you get really proficient at this, you'll be able to take this spring assembly apart using this method in about three minutes. So it'll be second nature. And once you find yourself being able to just blow through these really fast, that's when you can go ahead and t jack the whole truck up, take all the wheels off, take all of the, take it all the way apart, and then put them all the way back together. Do all the put all the wheels and tires back on, and do the adjustment, which is ultimately going to be the absolute fastest way to do it, because you're making efficiency of utilization of tools, meaning that you're not picking up and putting down the same tool over and over and over again. You're using that one tool, you know, you're using your hammer and your pry bar in the same way four times. You're using your you know, those pliers four times in the same way. So it's gonna make you be able to get through that process faster, which is gonna raise your proficiency. At the end of the day, axles per axle, your target time from wheel off, I mean, to, from jack up, wheel off, to wheels back on in adjustment should be 45 minutes per axle at the longest, right? If you're finding yourself doing it in a little over 45 minutes, that's good. If you find, if you think, if you want the people who think you, this should take you an hour, an hour and a half to do this, well, uh, I, I, I digress, but I think you may have problems staying employed uh, for the long term because this is a this is a 45 minute job, even though it pays. I think uh, it pay out about an hour and a half to two hours. It shouldn't take us as a professionals more than 45 minutes to get it done. All right, so thank you. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them for me. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.